there's really no denying it at this point. The sandwich is just one of the best inventions to ever happen in the culinary world. And one of the best parts about it is there's so many different variations of sandwiches that come from all over the globe because basically you're just taking elements from your cuisine, you're trying to balance them together, and you're putting them in some type of handheld vehicle that you can enjoy and bite your way through. It's an incredible invention, and I've been pretty much obsessed with them my whole life. I've been making them my whole life, trying to create them from all around the globe, and that's sort of the point of this series. I am on a mission to craft the perfect sandwiches at home, but create every single element from scratch. And I know for a lot of you, that's, that's pretty uh, labor intensive, but for me, that's the best part about a sandwich. You get to craft all of these different elements, balance them together for this perfect bite. And I've got a bunch of ideas already for this series, but if you've got a sandwich from your country that you know maybe you think is the best that possibly I haven't heard of, please comment in below and maybe I will make it in this series. And since I'm the cook, just remember, I'm creating my own perfect version. So it's not necessarily gonna be traditional, but I'm gonna be breaking down all of the traditional elements in that certain sandwich and crafting them from scratch at home. The first sandwich I am going to be breaking down and making from scratch in this series is the falafel sandwich, which comes from one of my favorite cuisines in the world, Middle Eastern cuisine or Arabic cuisine or any cuisine that uses falafel, that makes falafel. There's a lot of countries that you know make a lot of falafel and what they do is they take all of these other incredible little side dishes, little you know fresh elements and they stuff them together in a pita pocket for a perfect sandwich. So let's break down the falafel sandwich and they're not all the same, but what I've seen is they have very similar elements of course, every single one has a pita pocket. That is like the standard thing, a pita that opens up so you can stuff all of the elements inside, which is funny because I can imagine like the first person who created that, they baked bread and they were like, oh my God, it puffed up. Let's stuff some stuff in there. Genius, but also obvious at the same time. Then you have something spreadable like a hummus or some type of eggplant dip. Then you move on to some fresh elements, definitely like lettuce or tomatoes or cabbage. You've definitely got some type of zip, some type of creamy sauce, like um, a yogurt sauce or a tzatziki sauce. It's very important to balance all of these ingredients out with something tangy, something acidic. So you see a lot of pickles in the falafel sandwich. And then of course, star of the show, the falafel, usually made with chickpeas that are fried up into these little crispy balls that are amazing. So I'll be crafting my own version from scratch and what I'm going with is the standard pita. I'm gonna show you how to make incredible pita pockets. Then instead of a hummus, I'm not a, a huge fan of hummus and falafel. I find it's a little dry. I'm going with an eggplant salad. For the fresh, we're gonna keep it really simple with just some cabbage and some tomato. The zip sauce, we are going to make a creamy yogurt feta sauce, almost similar to a blue cheese. Then for the pickle, we're gonna do a quick cucumber and red onion pickle. And then finally, the falafel is gonna be pretty basic, but it's so important to get that right, to get a, a perfect falafel. I've made falafel so many times. It's one of my favorite things to do and I'm pretty good at it at this point. It wasn't always that way. I used to have disintegrating falafel, so we'll talk about all the ways to create perfect falafel in just a second, so let's get after it. Let's start with the eggplant spread. A lot of people call this eggplant salad or baba ganoush, but it's really simple. You just take a few big eggplants, and what I like to do is actually stab some holes in them and shove garlic cloves in there because you're just like doubling up. You're gonna roast your eggplant, but then you get roasted garlic. Wrap that in tin foil, bake it at about 450 degrees Fahrenheit for an hour and 30 minutes. Make sure you really bake that thing for a while so when you pull it out of the oven, it's pretty much deflated. Let that cool and then you're gonna remove the eggplant from the skin, add it to a bowl, add some tahini, which is sesame paste right in there, a little bit of salt and pepper and just kind of mix that up with a fork. It should all cream together very nicely. If you want it a little more creamy, you can add some of that juice that came out of the eggplant. 
And there you go, eggplant salad phase one. So we are moving on to the pickles and I'm just gonna do a very easy, quick pickle. What I do is take two cucumbers and I just slice them up really thin. You can use a mandolin, you can use a knife. And then I just salt them up, heavily salt those and let those sit for about 30 minutes until a lot of that moisture is pulled out. It's gonna help with the crispiness. Then I take some red onion and slice that really thin. And once those cucumbers have rested, I'm gonna add the red onion to the mixture. And then I'm just gonna hit it with a little bit of vinegar. I had some white wine vinegar and also some apple cider vinegar to add a little sweetness. And that's pretty much it, a perfect pickle element that you can can't really go wrong with you can put that on any sandwich and it's gonna be glorious so we are moving on to the creamy sauce so a lot of us have heard of tzatziki which is a cucumber yogurt sauce but I didn't really want to do that I had the cucumber element so that's what this is all about it's like you know crafting your own perfect balance since I already use cucumbers why would I need them in the sauce but I did want a cheese element. A lot of times you see feta sprinkled on top of a falafel sandwich. So instead I put the feta in the sauce. I took out a food processor. I added my parsley. I added a little bit of lemon zest and then I also squeezed in that lemon. Then I added my feta. I actually had some Australian feta which tends to be very creamy. It's stored in oil. And then I actually poured in some of that oil. And of course, if your feta is not stored in oil, you can just use olive oil. And then I added in about half of this package of yogurt and I blended that up. Forgot the salt and pepper. I added in just a little bit of that to taste. And then I poured that out into the bowl and it was a little thin at this point and that's why I saved the other yogurt. So I added that to thicken it up, put that in a squeeze bottle and then I just let that sit in the fridge. And a lot of these elements, they're, they're actually gonna get better over like the next day. Once those flavors meld together a little bit, they cool off and they blend, it's, it's gonna be incredible stuff. So we're moving on to the fresh ingredients, which is really simple. Again, you can use lettuce, whatever you have, but it is nice to, to just add a little freshness. You've got all of these cooked ingredients, a lot of strong flavors. So just some simple freshness will really go a long way. It's one of the more underrated elements to a sandwich, and I'm just using some fresh sliced up cabbage, and then I took a tomato and I cubed that up. So let's talk about the perfect pita for this sandwich. And of course you don't need a pita pocket. A lot of times I do just like, you know, dipping things with this type of food, but it is fun when you're making that sandwich to get that puffed up pita so you can stuff everything in there. So what I did was I took two teaspoons of yeast, and this is one of the only times you'll ever see me using the dry active stuff and not the sourdough starter but that's all right for this recipe. And then I added in one cup of warm water. Think like hot bath temperature, nothing above that or you will kill the yeast. I drizzled in a little sweetener, I had some maple syrup just to activate the yeast a little bit. Let that sit for about 20 minutes until that starts to bubble and activate. And then I add in my flour. I went in with just about three cups of flour. I drizzled in some olive oil. Of course, you need some salt to make it flavorful. And then I stirred that together until it starts to form these little chunks. And then you can put it out on the board and start to knead it. And once I start kneading it and kneading it, it all starts to come together. All of those pieces are gonna form into one nice dough ball. And once it's formed, I let that sit for about 30 minutes just to rest so the gluten will relax. Then I come back to it and finish the kneading off for about five minutes. and then you can let that proof. So put that in a bowl with olive oil, let that expand and look at this stuff. That was like one hour and it rose that much. I deflated that down and then I put that out on a board. I chopped it up into little pieces and formed them into balls.
So when I was rolling out the pita, I actually preheated a pan, and this is very important for the puff. You want something heavy, something that retains a lot of heat that you can put in the oven. I used a cast iron pan, I just oiled it up real quick to make it non-stick. Threw it in an oven at as high as your oven goes, mine's about 500, 550 degrees, and preheated that for about 30 minutes. What you do is you flop one of those right on your pan, and just set it for three minutes. I know it's incredible. It seems like that's a really short amount of time, but three minutes is all you need for perfect pita. And you'll see those things come out and they puff up. Not everyone puffs up perfectly, but you should get at least some puff so you can stuff your ingredients inside. And there's nothing better than a cutting board fold of fresh Pita. That is just insane. So the star of the show, the last element, of course, is the falafel. And the most important thing that I can't stress enough is you have to use dried chickpeas. I used to try with the canned chickpeas. It's not going to work. You're going to have to add a lot of flour and then the consistency is just going to be shit. If you really want good falafel, you got to take your chickpeas, add some water, and let them sit overnight. They're gonna soak up all of that water, they're gonna hydrate, and they're gonna be ready to go. Dump that out and drain off all that water. And I like to just let that sit to dry out a little bit. You don't want too much extra water in your mixture. So here are your basic ingredients for falafel. It's pretty simple stuff. And you know, you can use anything you want. Sometimes I'll add spinach. I like adding a lot of herbs in there so it's nice and green and super floral. It just has a great flavor. I'm using both mint and parsley. Then I add just two cloves of garlic, put in my chickpeas, squeeze in a little bit of lemon with no seeds, of course. and then just pulse that a few times. And this is the key to falafel. You're trying to get a nice balance between fine and super coarse. So somewhere in the middle, you don't want it too fine or you won't get enough of those crispy edges. And if it's too coarse, then it might fall apart in the oil. So somewhere in between, so just pulse that. And when you think you have that nice middle ground, just take a little ball of it, and as long as it clumps together, you should be fine. Get your oil hot around 350 to 375 degrees. And I took an ice cream scoop, and I just started scooping those babies in. Fry them on each side for like three minutes. You know, you don't want to overcook them. Most of those things, they're all, it's all raw in the middle and you can eat all of that. You just want a nice crispy coating so you get that crunch. And we are ready to create the perfect falafel sandwich. We made all of the elements. I know it's a labor of love, but the final product is gonna be incredible. So what I did was I took my pita and I just chopped off the top. You can use that for another pita. I spread on my baba ganoushes, the bottom creamy layer. Then I put on some of those fresh ingredients, the cabbage and tomato, hit it with the falafel. And then of course, the pickles right on top of there. And then just squeeze on that creamy feta yogurt sauce. I've said it before and I'll say it again. This is the only sandwich that you really do not miss meat when you eat it. It's so incredible on its own as a vegetarian delight. We did it. We did it. Episode one. That was awesome. I love breaking these things down and making them from scratch. It's a labor of love, but it's so worth it in the end. And then you have all of these ingredients and now I can make a ton of different stuff all week. So you just cook a bunch of stuff, you make a sandwich, and then you do whatever you want with the different elements. You repurpose them in so many different ways. Maybe that's, maybe that's another series, but please comment in below and let me know what you would like to see. If there's any sandwiches out there that you know of that you think maybe this guy has no idea about. I would love to hear what you're thinking. Make sure you follow Like by Mike G for all of the good food, educational, inspirational content on that platform. And I will see you for episode two 
when who knows what we'll be making. Uh, you'll know soon. One thing I really do not like is when I'm going out for dinner when I have a ton of good food left over in the fridge. And I just filmed the falafel video and I've got so many yummy leftovers. I'm going out with my wife tonight, but I figured out the answer. There's actually a place in Red Hook, it's a brewery, where you can bring your own food. So you know what I'm bringing? You know exactly what I'm bringing, this handheld beauty Wrapping this up to go, falafel on the run. This is called street food right here. Drip it. I think I need to have a moment with this. <laughs> no, with that. Have your moment.